Okay, this is what you'll need for the Eagle Eyes antenna tracker. First thing you uh, need to do is download the 3D files from Thingiverse and print them out. You should have six separate pieces. In addition to that, you'll need two servos. These need to be 180 degree servos, uh, which you can get from eBay or Hobby King. Um, they need to be able to turn through at least 180 degrees, so uh, normal RC servos would be unsuitable. Uh, they can be had quite cheaply and there's no need to get uh, expensive ones. You need the Eagle Eyes base station of course and the power panel if you want to use that that's optional. Um, you need a wiring harness to distribute the 12 volts and to get the video from the receiver to the base station. Um, you need a 5.8 gigahertz receiver. I'm using a diversity receiver for two antennas but a single antenna receiver would be fine especially as it's going to track the aircraft through the sky. And of course you need the antennas and pigtails to attach the antennas to the receiver. So those are the parts. The only other thing you'll need is a bag of 3mm by 20mm screws. Some of them that we use will be a bit shorter, but you can cut them down. Okay, so let's get uh, building. We start by taking the first tier and the Eagle Eyes um, ground station. Um, these four holes and indeed the other holes and the other 3D printed parts are printed at 2.8 millimeter diameter. That is so that you can tap them out and thread them to a 3 millimeter thread. So you can get a tap and tap out all four of those holes to three millimeters. If you don't have a tap then you can use self-tapping screws instead. You need uh, three millimeter self-tapping screws and don't tap these holes. Just use them as they are at two mil. You'll also need to tap the center hole which is the hole for the tripod mount. That should be tapped out to six millimeters. Um, again if you don't have a tap, it should be a pretty snug fit if you um, screw the tripod uh, bolt into there. And everything is mounted on a tripod. Now we start assembly. The eagle eyes just plugs straight in. There you go. And we're ready to put the next layer on, the next tier on. The next tier is the battery tray, which is this one. The hole should be on the side that only has two pillars of video connections on. Now we can uh, screw that on with 3mm bolts. I won't bore you while I do that. Now that's the battery tray attached with four screws. The battery tray is designed to take a 2200 milliamp battery which should give you more than enough for a good day's flying. Next thing we do is put the next tier on which is the tier that mounts the radio receiver. This has got six screws. Again we attach that with six three millimeter screws or with six self-tapping screws. There we go. 
And now the receiver tray is attached, we need to install the receiver. So first of all, um, we get the wiring harness. There should be two harnesses, one for the um, 12 volts to go to the receiver and the other one for the video to go from the receiver to the base station. So they need to be threaded through the holes. So first I'll do the video. Thread it through the hole in the battery tray. Take it through and thread it through the hole in the receiver tray. Um, that will be connected to one of the inputs for the um, for the base station. So we'll put that into the input for the base station. And the other thing we need 12 volts for the receiver. So you get 12 volt from the battery harness through this hole. And that's done. Now we get the receiver. Attach the video. We're using diversity. So that goes in. Diversity and 12 volts. Now for this particular receiver it's quite a tight fit which is not necessarily a bad thing because it holds the leads in place and you won't get any dropouts while your airplane's in the air. There you go, the receiver's mounted. Now you can put double sided sticky tape if you like to keep it firm or put a velcro strap around. It's quite firm as it is so I'm going to leave it like that at the moment. The next thing to add to the pile is the pan servo tray and again that gets screwed in with four three mil screws or with self tappers. There. Now that's in place, we need to start putting together the pan tilt mechanism. Um, so we'll get rid of that for the moment. Now to assemble the pan and tilt mechanism, we need two servos. And also with the servo kits will have come two circular uh, servo hubs or bosses. We need two of those. Right, on the tilt, sorry, on the pan tray we need to attach one of these to the center um, where there's a small hole uh, marked on the print um, and then attach that on the outside with two screws. We then um, attach that to the servo. Now it needs to be attached in such a way that when it pans around it goes through 180 degrees and the center of the travel is pointing up and down the servo. So we go left and right. Maybe it goes a little bit more right So it goes through a full 180 degrees and when it's at halfway travel it's pointing straight forward. And we can then fix that in place. With a servo mounting screw that comes with the kit. With the servo kit.
that's the pan tray done. Now for the tilt server, again we need one of these hubs and we attach that to the inside of the tray, inside of the arm, centered again on the marker hole, like that. Okay. On the other side, uh, I've put a six mil, no, sorry, an eight mil ball bearing. Now you you can use that, or you can just use a plastic plug. Um, I I use a ball bearing, and it's actually marked out on the 3D print to use an eight mil ball bearing. Okay, so we punch the ball bearing in and mount the hub, the server hub, onto the tilt tray. Now it's time to put it together. First thing we do, again, what we want to do is mount this so that when it's on full travel, it's pointing forwards. When it's on half travel, it's pointing directly up. And when it's on zero travel, it's pointing behind. Put that in. Now we mount the servo on the pan tray. So what I forgot to add was need to put a small stud in on this hole there uh, to mount into the into the ball bearing. And you'll see that when we put it together. Mount the servo. Plug the ball bearing ball race onto the stud and there we've got it. We've got pan movement and tilt movement. Next thing we do is we mount that into the, the pan servo tray. Okay, so now we plug in the pan servo, thread the cable through first, there's the pan servo, then we mount the tilt servo, that goes in there. Then we've got the pan and the tilt server. Now all we need to do is to bolt the servos into their mountings and we can use 3mm nuts and bolts um, if you should so choose or you can just use self tappers, self tapping servo screws. So I'll do that now. I'll do that now and then we wire it up make sure it's all working okay here we are all wired up according to the book um, there's nothing really to say about that um, this power lead here is to power your goggles your goggles plug into their video and audio and there's one more thing to plug in, that's the power panel if you've got one. And there's a recess at the back for that. Just feed the cable through. That should plug in nicely there. Just clip in. There. 
plugs in over here. There you are. Now the only thing to make sure is that it's able to move in all directions and none of the cables get um, stressed or caught up. Okay, that's the assembly. In my next video I'll show you how to um, set it up and calibrate it with the Eagle Eyes system.